The Civil War was the bloodiest battle in American history. Let's go on a journey exploring the specific events for each state during this awful war. Today, we will learn about the state of Arkansas during the Civil War, including the Battle of Pea Ridge, as well as the Battle at Prairie Grove, and much, much more. So find a comfortable spot to sit and grab a snack as we explore Arkansas in the Civil War. March of 1861. The voters in the state of Arkansas hold a convention to determine whether or not the state would join the seven other states that had already passed ordinances to leave the Union of the United States of America. It was decided that the state would remain as part of the Union, at least for now. But another larger scale meeting is set for the first Monday in August to discuss the matter further. It is also agreed among everyone there that if the Union tried to coerce the seven states who had already left the Union, whether by force or by other means, that would be the last straw for Arkansas and it would join the states by leaving the Union and joining them. The state of Arkansas had no desire to leave the United States as it had just seen the biggest economic explosion in the short history of the state, mostly due to the cotton farms developed all across the state, but mostly in the southeastern parts of the state. But how did these farmers produce enough cotton to see the kind of economic swing the state was experiencing, boil down to the one issue that was being discussed all over the country at that time? Slavery. The growth of slavery was a direct link to the cotton farm explosion. In fact, in 1860, one out of every five white citizens in Arkansas owned at least one slave. The majority only had a few slaves, and only 12% of the slave owners owned 20 or more slaves, which was considered the marker of wealth back then, and almost all of them lived in the southeastern regions of the state and owned the cotton farms. They also possessed a huge share of the state's wealth, and as you could expect, also the political power. At this time, however, the majority of the general population in Arkansas was hoping for a peaceful solution to the slavery issue and did not want to leave the Union. The very next month, on April 12th, when Confederate forces opened fire on Union forces at Fort Sumter in Charleston, South Carolina, President Lincoln called for troops to put a stop to the end of this rebellion, which included 780 men from Arkansas. This put the politicians in a position that forced them to act quickly, so a meeting was scheduled for May the 6th in Little Rock with the Secession Convention to discuss the matter further. At 4 p.m. that day, with a vote of 69 in favor of leaving the Union and one vote in favor of staying in the Union, Arkansas had officially left the Union and joined the Confederate States of America. Now, although at this point, the majority of Arkansans supported the state's decision, there was a small percentage of the population who didn't agree with it and even formed the Arkansas Peace Society, which was located in the north-central part of the state. This society was a resistance to the state leaving the Union and was short-lived as the state's militia broke it up very quickly, but there would still always be a divide in that part of the state, which is the main reason that even though Arkansas was one of the Confederate states, they supplied more troops to the Union Army than any other Confederate state other than Tennessee. With the exception of the northern and northwestern parts of the state, the rest of the state was supportive of the decision to leave the Union and join the Confederacy, and there were many military-age men in the state at that time 
and they were so passionate about what was going on that almost all of them rushed to go sign up to fight in the war. Some of these men were sent east of the Mississippi River to fight, while others were stationed in various locations, mostly inside the state of Arkansas. For the remainder of that year, it was pretty calm inside the borders of Arkansas, with no battles occurring anywhere in the state. That would all change, however, in February of 1862. In February of 1862, a Union Army led by Brigadier General Samuel Curtis was on the move, chasing a Confederate Army out of southwest Missouri across the border into Arkansas. Once across the border, they set up their camp near Bentonville, Arkansas. Now, Major General Van Horn had an army of 16,000 men just south of Fayetteville and was determined to either drive the Union troops back across the Missouri border or destroy all of them. His ultimate goal was to capture St. Louis for the Confederates, which would be a monumental achievement and would secure most of the Western Front for the Confederate cause. In March of 1862, Van Horn decided to march towards Bentonville. The weather was awful, and by the time his army reached the Union Army camp, they were completely exhausted. Van Horn decided to split his army into two armies and try to avoid a direct assault and instead sent one army around the right side to attack the Union Army from behind while the other army attacked them head on. At first, this completely overwhelmed the Union forces, but in the first stages of the battle, the Union Army captured or killed several key Confederate leaders, which threw the Confederate Army into chaos. That night, the Union Army regrouped and got organized, and the next morning, Van Horn decided not to attack again because his army was in such disarray. When a Confederate attack never came, the Union Army decided to launch their own attack and opened up a barrage of artillery fire that pounded the Confederate Army. This led to Van Horn retreating east and eventually out of the state of Arkansas altogether. But when he did, he also took most all of the Arkansas troops as well as all the supplies with him, which left Arkansas basically defenseless and secured Missouri for the Union side. In May of that same year, a Union army heading south from Missouri was threatening Little Rock. Governor Henry Massey Rector became so alarmed by these threats that he moved the state's archives to Hot Springs and fled there immediately. But a large group of local militia and Texas cavalrymen met the Union army in White County just north of Searcy, Arkansas which forced the Union Army to abandon their plans of taking Little Rock and instead decided to march east towards Mississippi. In July, the Union Army reached Helena, Arkansas and entered the city unopposed. Now, as part of the agreement, when Arkansas voted to leave the Union, another part of that bill was to change the governor's term from four years to just two years. And it was an election year, and soon the state would see a new governor, as well as a lot of political and military changes. Harris Flanagan, who was from Clark County, close to Arkadelphia, and was also serving in the Confederate Army, was voted the new governor of Arkansas. On November 14, 1862, Flanagan was inaugurated as the seventh governor of Arkansas. There was little Flanagan could do, however, with the state running very low on money and the presence of Union troops all throughout the state after the events from that year. Now this is when things would really start getting wild as the Confederates sent Thomas Heinemann to Little Rock to try to reassess the situation 
in what was being called the Trans-Mississippi District of the Confederate Army. Hindman was completely blown away when he showed up in Little Rock and nothing was there. General Van Horn had taken everything with him when he left for Mississippi, leaving Arkansas with no troops or supplies. Hindman knew that drastic measures would have to be taken to prevent the total invasion of the Union forces. So he immediately declared martial law and started drafting soldiers to defend the area, as well as executing people who had deserted and burning all of the cotton fields that would most likely be seized by the Union troops to prevent them from reaping the benefits of such fines. He also authorized the use of guerrillas, which were named partisan rangers, who constantly harassed the Union Army supply lines, but also wreaked havoc on civilians that didn't believe the same way as they did, or were from the opposite political party as them. These rangers accomplished two things in the state almost immediately. They completely broke down law and order across the entire state, and they also created an almost instant legitimate army that Heinemann could now work with, which is exactly what he planned to do. Once Heinemann had his new army established, they began marching north towards the Union Army. And once they got around 10 miles southwest of Fayetteville on December 7th of 1862, Heinemann's 12,000 man army attacked an isolated Union Army division at what is now called the Battle of Prairie Grove. However, what the Confederates didn't know is that they were spotted along the way while marching to Prairie Grove. Brigadier General James Blunt had his Union Army stationed in northwest Arkansas in Washington County since the Battle of Pea Ridge and had firmly secured northwest Arkansas for the Union side. Blunt had heard about the Confederate Army that was marching towards his army and had already requested reinforcements from Missouri and two divisions from Springfield were already on their way. At daybreak on December 7th, one mile south of the Prairie Grove Church, Confederate soldiers engaged Union troops and had them on the run. The Union troops were fleeing towards Fayetteville, but the Confederate troops were in pursuit. The Union Army stopped running around the Prairie Grove Ridge, where the two armies battled it out for a while, until finally the Confederates retreated back towards the top of the ridge where they had already formed a line of artillery and infantry in the woods. It looked like the Confederates were sure to win this battle, but then the Union reinforcements arrived. They too had artillery. The two armies exchanged artillery fire, but the Union cannons had a much longer range than did the Confederate cannons. And after a while, the Southern cannons were silenced by the Union cannons. As the Union prepared to attack the ridge, they bombarded the area for two hours with constant artillery fire until finally the Union troops decided it was time to move in. They captured the cannon of Confederate Captain William Blocker and continued their advance through the woods until suddenly the woods came to life with the sound of cannon and gunfire. The Confederates seemingly had surrounded the Union Army on three sides as they were marching through the woods. Now a counterattack from the Confederates was taking place towards the valley where the Union Army had a large cannon, which eventually forced the Confederates back into the woods for the time being. Now the Union troops decided to go back up to the hill to the Borden Apple Orchard to confront the Confederate troops once again, but were quickly stopped and were forced to retreat back to the valley once again. Now the Confederates started advancing towards the Union soldiers again, but by then, the Union Army had had time to get organized and line up their cannons. All 44 of them. 
Just as the Confederates marched across the field towards the Union Army in the valley, the Union Army fired all 44 cannons at the same time, forcing the Confederates to once again fall back to the woods just as nightfall was beginning to emerge. Both sides called for a truce throughout the night so they could care for the wounded and the dead. During the night, the Confederate troops used their blankets to wrap around the wheels of their cannons to muffle the sound so the Union Army couldn't hear them leaving. And quietly, they retreated, which now left the Union still in firm control of Northwest Arkansas as well as Missouri. In January of 1863, a large Union army of 50,000 men were crossing the Mississippi River on boats near Vicksburg, headed for Arkansas Post in Arkansas County in extreme eastern Arkansas. The Union army easily defeated the small Confederate army stationed at the post, which consisted of only around 5,000 men. Many of the Confederates were taken prisoner, and all of their supplies and ammunition were now in the possession of the Union Army. By this time, Major General Theophilus Holmes was the new Supreme Confederate Commander in Arkansas, and he knew that the Confederate side was in serious trouble in Arkansas. They needed a win, and in a big way, or the Union side would soon completely overtake the entire state. He immediately went to work on a plan to attack the Union troops in Helena in extreme southeastern Arkansas. The Union troops had been stationed there since July of 1862 and had firm control over the area. Early in the morning on July 4, 1863, the Confederate Army invaded Helena. The attack was nothing short of a complete failure. They couldn't take the city, and they suffered 1,600 casualties in the process. But for the Confederate side, there was much more bad news than just this. Not only did it look hopeless for the Confederate side in Arkansas at this point, but on that very same day, the news was brought that General Robert E. Lee and his army had been forced to retreat at the Battle of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania the day before and were on the run as well as the fact that the Confederate stronghold in Vicksburg on the Mississippi River had surrendered to Union troops, which meant that now even more Union troops would be freed up to fight in Arkansas. Around the middle of August 2nd, different Union armies consisting of 14,000 men total began marching from Helena, Arkansas towards Little Rock in an attempt to once again try to take the capital city of the state. On September 10th, the Union Army crossed the Arkansas River just south of Little Rock where they encountered many skirmishes with Confederate troops in a last ditch effort to protect Little Rock from the Union forces. That same day, the Confederate troops were forced to evacuate the city, which they did, along with Pine Bluff and Fort Smith, as they knew they were getting nowhere and fast. They decided to withdraw to southwest Arkansas to the town of Washington, which would become the Confederate state capital for the rest of the war. Before the year was over, the Confederates did make one more attempt to retake Pine Bluff when Brigadier General John Marmaduke moved north from Princeton with his 2,000-man army to attack General Powell Clayton's 550-man army in Pine Bluff, but failed to retake the city as many former slaves assisted the Union troops by putting up bales of cotton in the path to slow down the Confederate troops enough that the Union army was able to repel the attack. This would be the last battle in Arkansas in 1860. After the fall of Little Rock to the Union side, 
A new government would need to be established as well as a new state constitution drafted and signed. So in January of 1864, a new state constitution was drafted and signed. It was basically identical to the already existing constitution, except this one made slavery illegal and made secession from the Union also illegal. Isaac Murphy was chosen as the new governor of Arkansas and a new state legislature was elected as well. Arkansas was now officially back as a part of the United States again, but the war in this state wasn't over quite yet. In March of 1864, Union forces decided to set out on a very ambitious mission known as the Red River Expedition, which consisted of multiple states, but the specific part of the expedition in Arkansas would become known as the Camden Expedition. The Union troops were to move southwest from Little Rock towards Shreveport, Louisiana, where they would meet up with another Union army that would be heading north from New Orleans, Louisiana. The goal of the operation was to destroy the remaining Confederate troops in southern Arkansas as well as northern Louisiana, which would also give the Union the ability to completely take the state of Texas back as well as take millions of dollars worth of cotton and many other supplies along the way. This entire mission turned into disaster for the Union Army when the army marching north from New Orleans was defeated by a Confederate army in Mansfield, Louisiana, which caused the other Union Army that was headed to Shreveport to have to go it alone. As supplies dwindled away, as well as receiving no other support from the Union in their advance to Shreveport, a growing resistance from within the Army group itself led to abandoning the raid on Shreveport, and instead the Army settled in Camden, Arkansas, which had been very recently abandoned by the Confederates. While in Camden, the Union Army sent out a wagon train west to gather corn and other food and supplies, but it was ambushed by Confederates at Poison Spring as it was returning to Camden on April the 18th. Four days later, the exact same thing happened again at Mark's Mill. At this point, it was apparent that there was still a significant number of Confederate troops in this part of the state, and the Union soldiers needed food and supplies, so they decided to head north again back to Little Rock. On the way to Little Rock, the Union Army was once again attacked as they attempted to cross the Saline River at Jenkins Ferry in Leola, Arkansas. However, the Army eventually escaped and made it back to Little Rock, but now after the disaster of the Red River Expedition, the Confederates now had the opportunity they needed to start their own counteroffensive, and plans got underway. In September of 1864, Major General Sterling Price set out towards Missouri with his army of 12,000 men on a bold quest to attempt to take back some ground in both Missouri and Arkansas. His plan failed in a big way, though, when his army was defeated soundly in the Battle of Westport near the Missouri-Kansas border on October 23rd. Price's army retreated south after their defeat towards Lanesport, Arkansas, in the southwest part of the state. When they arrived there, only 3,500 men remained out of the original 12,000. Now this would end up being the last military battle fought in the state of Arkansas during the Civil War. The Union side now had firm control over the state, and any hopes of a Confederate resurgence disappeared when in November of 1864, Abraham Lincoln was elected to a second term as President of the United States. Officially, the war did not end in the Trans-Mississippi area of the country until June 2, 1865, but Arkansas had ceased to be part of the Confederacy long before that time. Altogether, more than 10,000 Arkansans lost their lives in this bloody war, and property losses were in the millions of dollars across the entire state. 
The devastation was everywhere you looked, and the effects of the Civil War in Arkansas would be felt for many years to come, even after the war was over. I hope you have enjoyed this video today. This is the first of a series about the Civil War where we are taking a look at how each state was affected by the war, one state at a time. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you don't miss any of this series as they are released. Also be sure to like this video and share it with anyone else you may know who might enjoy content like this or had any family involved in the Civil War, regardless of which state they are from. The next episode will be about the events that happened in the state of Missouri during the Civil War. But in the meantime, click this video next to see how the United States became a nation to begin with and have a great day.